What is ageism? Uh, well, people basically thinking you're old and therefore you're irrelevant. We, you know, oh, okay. those sort of things. Uh, essentially, your age works against you. Mm. Uh, once you hit 60 something, 70, um, and, and you're sort of marginalized to the point of being excluded. Well, in Singapore, we reverse that. We started to reverse it. For example, uh, as you know, uh, it used to be required that any director on the board, once they reach a certain age, has to be elected, re-elected every year instead of two or three years, according to the, the constitution of the company. So that now has been uh, reversed, uh, not only in uh, corporations, but in charities, other uh, non-profits and so on. But I think I really uh, wanted to just talk a little bit about Mary said uh, about uh, people needing to understand each other. And I think it's very important for the young people to seek to understand rather than be understood and for the old people to also do the same. Because uh, because end of the day, you know, we show respect, we as boomers show respect and uh, regard to what is being contributed in a discussion by young people, you'll find that they will also start to want to hear what we have to say. And I think uh, very often because we know we go into a meeting or older people are, you don't know what you're talking about kind of vibe. And that I think really puts off young people to be open to older people. I, I know a company, for example, where I actually advise, I'm surprised I'm, I'm advising a company because I'm the only old person around. And the, the boss really doesn't like to have to hire what he calls Lao Chiao, right? the, the old birds, right? <laughs> And, and, and then basically because he thinks that they'll come, he'll come and, and disrupt his disruptive thinking. So I think as, uh, as older people, we must entertain disruptive thought. Uh, you know, we can be the ones to help to mitigate disruptive thought in not going, becoming anarchy because, I, you know, unbridled disruptive thinking can result in anarchy. So I think there's a lot of understanding that needs to be seeded between the younger and older generations. I think I think I think the point that I think Kalan made earlier was was it, it is it, it is important that I, it's very important for older people to keep up with technology. Uh, I mean technology and and other things, uh, you know, but especially technology. So so to be able to talk the same language and do the stuff and, and it's it's a it's you know it, I find uh, and because I'm a consultant and I, I and I do a lot of zoom and, and stuff yeah I, I need to be quite techy but i'm i'm not i'm fortunate that i have a good gm who is but it's just they're, they're just it's just a simple resistance i mean mm. just shopping online I, I just don't shop online you know i like to go and look at the stuff like my my son-in-law the other day we, we were having some drinks at my place and, and i said i ran out of ice he said no problem i'll, I'll get it and he he ordered ice and I said, I'll just go across the shop and buy it. You know? He said, it's already on the way. I said, you're nuts, sir. He said, it's going to cost $5 delivery for a, a dollar packet of ice. Yeah. That's the way it is. So it's like you've got to get to understand. And, 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 and that's sometimes very difficult for us uh, older people to, to get. But I mean, you have to. You know? Otherwise, you're, uh, yeah, you will be alienated you know so uh, just an old fart i don't know what the hell he's talking about <laughs> actually i feel like um i'm sorry go ahead and teach it. yeah i was i was gonna say i feel like actually covid actually helped a lot of um the older folks to yes. get into technology yeah. and yes. i find that they are more open to it because they don't want to be alienated from their families you know like my grandma she is uh 90 this year and she actually mm. learned how to use um facetime <laughs> you know mm. uh, what's that face message yeah. and even yeah. like um zoom just so that yeah. she can connect with the family. So yeah. I feel like COVID actually, you know, uh, mm. helped help them to embrace it a little bit more and and, and stop them from being alienated. You know, they could yeah. still have yeah. that connection. The strongest part of ageism in, a, in relation to technology comes with underestimating us. You know, underestimating the boomers, underestimating all the adults. Um, the, and when you look at the whole cohort, there is a disadvantage. 50% of my year didn't go past PSLE. Um, so education does help. Basic education does help in catching up with technology. But by and large, I'll give you an example. I go to the hospitals, you have these screens where you register, tick, 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 tick on the screen, right? Pretty simple. I might be a little slower because I'm reading everyone and making sure I'm giving the right answer. Zip, one hand will come. Right, like, like, like by my ear and answer for me. 
Um, now that's ageism. <laughs> that's ageism. Assuming I don't know how to tap, tap, tap. Mm. What do I do about it? Your question, Kevin, was how do we address ageism? Yeah. I say confront it. I will turn on and ask that kind young person, you really know whether I was abroad the last 14 days? Do you really know whether I sneezed and coughed and had a fever last night? So why are you answering for me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so technology plays both ways. It's fun to learn, but I think um, at least in my cohort, it's a challenge if you don't have the basic, at least for education. Mm -hmm.